at the same time we know what is happening in jammu and kashmir ms ramakrishnan alert to that the country's first prime minister giving his speech in hindi said we are a nation is whose land is strewn with blood khun se ranga hua hai ye zameen it is not simply about that constituent assembly it is about the promises of our constitution assembly so this was the question posed by my lord the chief justice yesterday and it's a particularly important question because one and i'll just formulate the proposition because one in this case you have not one but two constituent bodies so in many ways it is unique to india's constitutional founding because it is the only state with its own distinctive constituent assembly to it forces upon us this seminal constitutional question can the constitution of india be altered in ways opposed to her founders constitutional intention and i'm not saying a drafter's opinion i'm not saying a debate within the constituent assembly i am saying can it be altered in ways opposed to her founders constitutional intention when we think of this country's founding at a time of partition from 46 to 49 our assembly, our constituent assembly is drafting our constitution at the same time we know what is happening in jammu and kashmir ms ramakrishnan alert to that the country's first prime minister giving his speech in hindi said we are a nation is whose land is strewn with blood khun se ranga hua hai ye zameen that is our constitutional founding so my first proposition is this there are certain seminal founding moments for any constitution but more specifically indian constitutionalism why are those seminal founding moments important crucial significant while interpreting the constitutions as your lordships will it is because my lords have walked the path of transformative and expansive constitutional interpretation and your jurisprudential moorings with great respect derive their legitimacy their integrity and their intellectual rigor from these founding moments from our drafters constitutional intention if my lords had chosen since the 1970s a different path of minimalist interpretation of limited review then we would not have to worry about constitutional founding moments but your lordships have embarked on this methodology of expansive and transformative constitutionalism and thank heavens for that because that goes back to the needs of our difficult founding the creation of this country two constituent assemblies and also the unique brand of federalism that was envisaged by our founders for the state of jammu and kashmir integrated with the union of india and it's not just article 1 and article 370 which is part of that constitutional intention it is much more than that it is the specific provisions and i'll take you to them very briefly my lords have read it i'll just refer to them it is the specific provisions of the constitution of jammu and kashmir article sections 4 and 5 it is the specific provisions of territorial integrity of the state of jammu and kashmir that our founders promised and the jammu and kashmir constitution recognized in its constitutional text 
such territorial integrity was not promised to any other state. This is all part of the founding constitutional intention. Now, in the 1960s, on an aside, my lord, when Thurgood Marshall was asked, why is it so important to have Brown versus Board desegregate America? He responded saying that it is not about their humanity, it is about our humanity. So today I present to my lords a different version of that. It is not simply about that constituent assembly. It is about the promises of our constitution assembly. It is about that legacy of interpretation that my lords started four decades ago. That is what this founding moment is about. That is what this model of federalism is about. That is what the intricacies of this model of federalism that embraced this version of what Ms. Ramakrishnan called shared sovereignty. That is part of India's federalist structure. Now, please see, my lords. May I take my lords to section four of the Constitution of Jammu and Kashmir, 1957. And the second proposition is this, and it's in the note. The abrogation of Article 370 has vitiated the unique internal sovereignty guaranteed by both constituent assemblies of Jammu and Kashmir and India. And this is in the middle of the note, my lords. So part two of the constitution of Jammu and Kashmir categorically retains internal sovereignty with the state, along with residuary powers to the state government. This is unique to Jammu and Kashmir and distinct from the rest of India, where residuary powers under Article 248 is vested with the Union Parliament. And to this, my lords, my lords have sections four and five, but four simply says this, it provides that the territory as under 15th August 1947, under the sovereignty of the ruler, that territory is, is comprised of the territorial integrity of the state. And that territorial integrity of the state is guaranteed to be protected. And section five simply says this, it provides that the legislative assembly of the state and all executive and legislative powers. So the legislative assembly of the state is vested with the residuary powers. Now this brand of the vesting of the residuary powers, the legislative residuary powers with the state assembly is unique to the state. 